So welcome back guys to another video on Kids Coding Playground. Today I'll be making an Indiana Cat game, it's kind of like Indiana Jones. So you, the objective of the game is to get the gem, which is right here, and avoid all these traps, and get to the exit, which is right here. You can find this game idea in a book called Super Scratch Programming Adventures. For more information, check this link right here. And we'll provide a link to our Google Drive in the description below on downloading these sprites. And we'll be today we'll be learning these following concepts in Scratch. Broadcasting messages, custom blocks, using operators, uh, touching colors, using a list, and variables. So I'll show you guys how the game works. I took out I took out the Indiana Jones music because um because uh, YouTube can claim our video if um we play copyrighted music so I just decided to take a sound from the library. So when you start it types out the uh, the say what the instructions and you can use arrow keys or WASD to move around and when you get hit it'll teleport and it'll say ouch and say meow, make a meow sound. So just try to get past all these traps. So you have to, as you can see, you have to get the key right here, get to the keyhole, and this gate will open. Then you can get the, then you can get the gem and go to the exit. So go up here, avoid the spike trap up there. Take the key. Unlock it, the gate will open, you collect the gem, and all these traps will start moving. So you go through here, and there's still one more trap right here, S spears that come out of the ground. And once you go to the end, it'll say you won, it took you how many seconds, and it took you how many attempts. So let's go make a new, t new project. So first we'll need to get all our sprites set up. Let's still like the scratch cat. I already have everything, all the sprites in the <clears throat> in the um, backpack. You can just load the sprites into here. Let's so load the Indiana cat. Load the gate. Just drag them into here. So now we have everything set up. So this is the layout. Um, you can just put all of this and I forgot the keyhole. Yeah, so now we have everything set up. So let's go to the code for the cat. The movement, so first we'll be working on the movement. <clears throat> and also since um, we put all these stuff in our backpack, it's all in the right position, so if it's not like this, drag it into the right position, like this. You can do it any way you want, of course, but I'm gonna do it like this. And the indie cat should be 90 size, and the whip tail, this thing should be 40 size. I scaled it uh, correctly, that's the best size for them. So let's go for the movement for the cat first. So for the setup, we'll need to make a couple variables. So let's get our three variables. We do not need the my variable, just delete it. Make a new variable called attempts. Attempts. So this is supposed to count how many attempts it takes. It takes for you at the end. Make a new variable called letter. Letter, that's the... Um, that's for, um, so you know how when in the beginning it'll type out the word? We'll need that for the type text thing. Um, and we'll need to make a new, finally, one more variable called timer. And the timer is supposed to be, at the end, it'll tell you how fast you completed the game in. So, and then we'll need one list called words. This is for the type text again. We'll get onto that later. So now we have the variables. <clears throat> We could actually start on the cat. So we can start on the movement of the cat. So when clicked, 
we have to set the attempts to one because at the end it'll show as one attempt so just set the attempts to one in the beginning hide the variable attempts hide all the variables in the beginning hide the variable timer and set the timer to zero in the beginning so it'll start on zero <clears throat> we can show these for now so I can show you how these variables work right now so next we want to set the size for the cat to 90 percent so hiding the variable is the same as unchecking them so you could either uncheck them in the beginning or anything to or you can use the hide variable so you can uncheck or use the hide variable so we want to set the size to 90 again set the size to 90 in the beginning i already know i know i already set it to 90 but if you haven't, then you can just put this block right there. We want it to go to like somewhere right here. I already set the um, coordinates for it. So I got negative 295, 205, negative 205 and 150. That, those were my coordinates I got last time. <clears throat> and we want a forever loop. And this is the movement, like the um arrow keys wsd so if then if the left arrow key 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 left key up or w so key up arrow or w is pressed that means if either one of these are oops x if either one of these uh keys are pressed then it will go up so if so we'll change the y by 3 so it'll go up <clears throat> change y by 3 and if then touching the color I want an if then statement in here if then touching the color of the edge like this thing the edge this thing um, just select the edge of it like that yeah and it's touching that color which is 10 color, 100 saturation, and 95 brightness, then it'll change the Y by negative three. So it'll go back, so you can't go through the wall. <clears throat> so now let's work on the other arrow keys, so you can just duplicate this, put it right here. If then, let's say down arrow, or S arrow, S key is press, then we'll change the Y by negative three. <clears throat> and it'll, and if touching that color, then it'll change the Y by three. So you will always want it to be the opposite of it. So go back and we'll go through the wall. So you can just duplicate this, duplicate both of them. So put it right here. So if the, now if the, right arrows press that or the d or d is press then we can change instead of y we have to use x because we're going side to side so change the x by three um point in direction of 90 so face the uh right side <clears throat> and you can just move, take this out, put the change X by negative three in here, if it's touching the color. So now we have this right arrow. Now let's work on the left arrow. Left arrow is just pretty much the opposite of it. It's pretty much the opposite of this thing. Duplicate, left arrow. Left arrow key or A is pressed. <clears throat> then we can change the X by negative three. Point direction of negative 90, so we'll face the left side. Negative 90 and change X by three, the opposite, so it won't go through the wall. So now we have all this for the movement. So now we can move left and right, up and down. You can use the WASD. And it can't, and when it touches the color, 
it will not go through. As you can see, it won't go through the walls. Let me just hide the letter variable real quick. So now, see, it won't go through. So that's the movement. And we'll, let's add, we can do the type text thing today. So we need to make a new block. So today we'll just cover the cat movement and the uh, text type a thing. So we can name this type words. Type words. Add two inputs. One is one is going to be called text. One is called text, and one is called type. So two, two uh, inputs. So you click OK. So you have this. So for, in the beginning, you want to set the letter to one. So you got one letter. Letter to one in the beginning. And delete all of words. So it'll delete the word list in the beginning. So you want to get the repeat. Repeat the length. Length of text. This means <clears throat> it'll repeat however long the text you write is. So if you write if you write like hi, it's two it's two. So it'll repeat two times. So you will change so then we'll add we'll need to go to variables. Add add letter then we'll add letter <clears throat> letter, letter, the variable, put it in the here, of the text. So add the letter you input to the text, to the word list. So you want to change the letter by one every time, every time uh, you write a new, new letter. So you change it by one. <clears throat> you can take an if else statement. To get if then else statement, put it under here. So if type is equal to say, which means if the type is equal to saying, not not thinking. So there's two types. There's thinking and saying. If the type, this thing, is equal to say, then it'll say, say the words. Say or say all up here. Say words. It'll say the words in the word list you put in. And else, if it's not, if type is not equal to say, if it's not true, then it'll think the words. So next, you can do under here. You can do a wait 0.1 seconds just to make it a little slower so people can read it. 0.1 seconds. Wait one second down here and clear, clear the words, say, so what you want to do right here is just clear it. <clears throat> and then we need to add something else. Let me zoom in so you guys can see, let me just copy it down. Then we can take a, we clicked forever, set timer, set the variable timer to the sensing timer. So the timer will keep on going up second by second. <clears throat> and in the beginning, in the beginning we can um, take the type text, type words, put it right here. Put the instructions like, go get the gem and escape. Like that. And think. So I put think right here, so it'll think it, not say it. So so right here it says if type is equal to say, then it'll say it, else it'll think. So if this is not say, then it'll think it. So if you put anything right here, it will still think. So let's play it. It'll think, see it's thinking, and say go get the gem and escape, and type it out. And the movement still works. 
and if you show the variable timer, it's actually going up right here, see? So we'll actually stop right here. So right now we have the movement, the type text words, and the timer done. So tomorrow, in the next video, we will work on the, um, work on the, like, the other deep, the traps. We'll work on the traps and the lock and the keys next time. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. And please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.